Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Books Beside My Bed video. I film one of these every week where I recap the last seven days worth of reading. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. Last week, I only managed to get up my Books Beside My Bed video and my planner videos yesterday and nothing on Wednesday or Friday. It was kind of a really rough week. I had actually filmed everything, but by the time I was actually getting through the week, I didn't actually have the energy to edit and upload. And it was just... It's been a week, guys. This is my reading week from the 26th of May until the 1st of June. I read two and a half things this week. One YA urban fantasy novel, one YA sci-fi novella, and I am halfway through Arctic Sun, which is Annabeth Albert's next book in the Frozen Hearts series that she's writing, and that is an adult LGBTQIA plus romance. I read 453 pages this week, my yearly reading total is up to 140 books. Because this is also the wrap up that concludes May at the end of this video, I'll include some of my stats and some info about the books that I have been reading over the last month. Something fun that did happen last night as I'm filming this, so on Saturday night, was the YA Rooms Introverts Night Out, which was an event that the YA Room, the local young adult book club here in Melbourne, hosted at Library at the Dock, which is a beautiful brand new library. I've never been there and it was really nice to go out and sort of see what it's like to gorgeous space. And this was a night of celebrating reading with people who really don't like to go out, which is hands down me. The guys at the YA Room had organised for three authors to be there, Michael Pry, Astrid Schultz and Jodie McAllister, all fantastic young adult Australian authors who I've seen now a couple of times and they're always fantastic to listen to. All three of them did a reading from one of their most recent works and in Michael's case it was the upcoming work Graveyard Shift in Ghost Town which I'm very excited about that's coming out in I think July. There were door prizes and I won a finished copy of Four Dead Queens which Astrid signed for me on the night. Like so. so now I have a signed arc and a signed hard copy and it is gorgeous and it has deckwood edges and it's very very pretty. There was food, there was a trivia quiz which I was in a team with Kat and I'll leave her channel down below. And this quiz was hard, guys. Kat and I won, but even I'm not entirely sure how we won because we got 18 out of 30. So it was hard. <laughs> For winning, we all got, uh, everyone in the team got book packs and I got a pack of three books. I had a copy of Release by Patrick Ness, which I already own, and also Mercy Point by Anna Snokestra, which I already own. So I handed those over to a few other people who hadn't read them before. So, you know, sharing the bookish love, I don't need to have multiple copies of things that I already own. Um, but the third book that I did get was Dry by Neil Schusterman and Jared Schusterman and I've heard good things about Neil's work so I'm looking forward to reading this at some point. After the trivia quiz there was a Q&A with the three authors which is always really fascinating. They've all got really unique perspectives on being a writer and publishing work so that was really fun to just listen to them chat and then I came home and I sat on the couch and I started watching Good Omens on Amazon Prime and I'm just, I'm so happy. I'm going to be finishing that today. That is my goal because I'm being a couch potato today while I am in recovery mode before I go back to work on Monday and I'm going to watch Good Omens. Okay, that is completely non-bookish related. So let's get into the books that I read this week because that's what you're here for. I'm going to start with my currently reading just because I can't give you a finished anything on it. And I'm reading it on my Kindle. It is Neck Galley Arc Arctic Wild by Annabeth Albert. It is a 2019 release from Karina Press and it is the second book in the Frozen Hearts series. I read the first book earlier in the year, might have been January or February. This is a series of male male romances that are set in Alaska, usually with a high-powered sort of somebody coming from the city and doing a tour or whatever of the Alaskan countryside and falling for the tour guide. The first book was a lot of fun. This one is I'm actually enjoying this one a lot more than I enjoyed the first book. Pacing is still off on them so far, but that said, I'm enjoying it. Arctic Wild follows Reuben, who is a high-powered lawyer in his late 40s, I think, who is sort of conned into going on a tour of the Alaskan countryside. While he's there, he's the only person in the tour group. The other people have dropped out of the tour. And so he's traveling around with Toby, who is a young guy in his early 30s. He's a seaplane pilot and tour guide, and they're flying around the Alaskan countryside until a couple of days into the trip, the plane crashes and Toby is left injured and Reuben is convinced that he needs to take a break from his work and he also wants to help look after Toby. There is an attraction between the two of them. Nothing has happened up until that point. Reuben actually collects his daughter who wanted, was going on a summer camp but really didn't want to go. So the two of them decide to spend the summer in Alaska. 
and they help Toby out. And so far that's about, I'm about 50% of the way through the book. It's fun. There's going to be a lot of angst as per usual with these books. Like I said, the pacing is a little bit off on these. I much prefer her Out of Uniform series, which I adored, but you know, it's a fun read and I enjoy her, I enjoy her stories. So that's what I'm currently reading. Last Sunday, I read Haven by Mary Lindsay. I received this in a page habit box and this is a young adult paranormal book. It was published in 2017 by Entangled Teen and I gave it four out of five stars. I'd heard a lot of really mixed things about this book. It is sort of like a Beauty and the, it is sort of like a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it is gender switched. Our main character is a male. His name is Rain. When his mother dies, Rain is sent to New Würzburg. I think is how you say it. He's going to live with his mother's sister, his aunt, who is a deputy deputy sheriff in the town. And it, it takes him a while to settle in. And when he starts at the new school, he meets Freddie, who is one of the local girls with a bit of a chip on her shoulder. She's very rough around the edges. She has a pretty big secret. This is where sort of the gender switch, Beauty and the Beast sort of thing sort of comes in. This is a werewolf paranormal urban fantasy story. It was a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I was expecting to and for that I am very appreciative. For the first time in a long time I really enjoyed the male main character more than the female main character. Not that I didn't like Freddie. Freddie was awesome and I love how she stood up for herself and she really wanted to follow her own path and to stand up for what she believes in and be the strong leader that she needs to be. But Rain was actually a really awesome sort of cinnamon roll of a character who is desperately trying to understand what is going on in this town and what is going on with Freddie and her family and why everything is happening the way that it's happening. I appreciated it. It was good fun. And then most excitedly on Saturday when I picked up the mail that I had not been able to collect earlier in the week, my hard copy of Aurora Rising arrived from America along with Memento, which is the Illuminae Files prequel novella that was released as a promo for Aurora Rising. So I'm very, very excited to have this. It is a 2019 release. I think this is published by, not I don't know how to pronounce that either. And I get five out of five stars purely because I'm sentimental and because I love Aiden. And this is all about what happened to get Aiden to the point where he is at the start of Illuminae, where he's been damaged by the nuclear warhead and why he starts acting the way he does. So at the start of this novella, it is six weeks before the attack on Carenza 4 and a new technician comes aboard the Alexander to work with Aiden and to look at the neural pathways and Aiden's responses. And we begin this book with Aiden referring to itself in the third person because it is sort of removed from the situation. Over time while working with Private Klein, it begins to try and unpack what it means to be human or to try and at least understand humans. And it's all about the idea that Klein challenges Aiden with moral dilemmas and it learns and it's really quite interesting. I love anything to do with artificial intelligence and I love seeing the progression of artificial intelligence moving from purely AI to something a little bit more. There's also a side plot with Klein having a romance with a superior officer and some other things that are going on in there but the main story is really how Aiden gets to be where he is at the start of Illuminae and I adored it very much so. So those are the things that I have been reading this week. Okay now on to some stats. So I actually wrote down some more stats aside from just my graphs so I'll go through these super quickly. I read 29 books or things in May. I read three middle grade or kids books, 16 YA books and 10 adult books. I read one poetry collection, three anthologies, one picture book, two novellas, three nonfiction books, one graphic novel and 19 novels. And I'm hoping that all that maths adds up because if it doesn't then I've miscounted somewhere and I apologize profusely. Okay now for my graphs. My author gender ratio is still pretty much the same. I'm still majority female authors. My protagonist gender is still also pretty much the same. I do tend to pick books with predominantly female protagonists. My age group graph, I am still mostly reading adult books, which is making me really happy. But I think collectively, if you added kids middle grade and YA, then I'm reading more of that. But overall, as a single age group, I'm mostly reading adult books. My genre wheel is just a continued colourful joy of a thing that I love looking at. It just makes me happy. Still predominantly sci-fi but as the year goes on I'm obviously adding more things into it. I'm still mostly reading trade paperbacks but I'm also reading more audiobooks and ebooks at the moment. I'm still mostly reading novels. That's just my preferred 
length of book to read. Page length hasn't really changed, it's still sitting around 300, 399 pages, that tends to be average for most books anyway. The majority of my books were published in the 2000s, most of them were published in 2018 because I'm reading through the books that I picked up last year, so that's not really going to change. My 2019 might catch up a little bit. And my ratings, my main rating tends to be around a 4 because I know what I like to read and I purposely pick up books that I know I'm going to enjoy, that's just something that I do. Anything that's sort of less than three tends to be an outlier. So I know what I like to read. That's pretty much all I can say about that. So those are my stats. In the comments below, let me know what you have been reading over the last seven days, or if you have read any of the books that I have and what your thoughts are on them. As always, I hope that wherever you're in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.